Welcome back to FullBibleTimeline.com. We're going to uh, continue our study through the Bible Timeline. And as I've mentioned before, this is the digital online uh, Zooming presentation of the Bible Timeline. And we also uh, naturally uh, sell the 9-foot full-color vinyl timeline. And we've gone over in previous videos how to read this chart, uh, in examining the, the dates and how to uh, follow the chart along and some of the special features. In this video, we're going to go more into the life of Abraham. And that is focused down here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. And this is Abraham here. Abraham is this kind of uh, soft burgundy uh, color. My wife would know the name of it exactly. I don't. Abraham was born in the year 1948. Now that's 1948 from the fall of man. So from the moment that Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, to the birth of Abraham, the father of Israel, was 1948 years. Now I find it interesting that Israel as a nation is born again in our Gregorian calendar, in our year, 1948. Now, that might just be a strange coincidence. I don't know. So, here we have Abraham's birth in the year 1948. Terah, his father, was born in 1878. And these are the BC dates, this black number here. The yellow number is that non-stop count from the fall of man to present to uh, Abraham right here, 1948. This white number, again, is the years between father and son. So Terah was 70 years old when he had Abram. We can see that Abram lived 175 years in total and died when it was 2123. That's the year Abram died. His father, Terah, was born in 1878, lived for 205 years, and died in the year 2083. What I want to point out to you, something very fascinating about the life of Abraham. Abraham is born in 1948. According to Jewish rabbis, and according to the book of Jasser, and now I know you're scratching your head, but let me just mention something for you. If you've read the book of Jude, then you've read a portion of the book of Enoch. Now, the book of Enoch is not in the Bible. But there's a verse that was considered um, worth putting in the book of Jude. Jude quoted from the book of Enoch. So what's my point? My point is that there was one reference of the book of Enoch in Scripture, and a direct quote from that book. There are two references of the book of Jasser in Scripture. And for a lot of you, you may not be familiar with the book of Jasser, but it's widely available. Uh, I believe the entire thing is available online You could, um, because somebody's taken the time to transcribe the entire book of Jasser uh, online. The book of Jasser was available in very early um, um, copies of the Bible, uh, but at some point the book of Jasser was dropped from the canon of Scripture. And uh, so that being said, I'm not going, what I'm about to tell you, I'm not going to tell you it's gospel, but what I am going to tell you is not only in the book of Jasser, but it is also in the Babylonian Talmud. And the Babylonian Talmud, along with the Jerusalem Talmud, are two, um, it's best to say, uh, Encyclopedia Britannicas of Jewish history, where Jewish rabbis and the leading scholars of the world would come together and um, put down in writing their oral histories so that they didn't lose their histories. A lot of persecution took place um, with the Jewish people, and they recognized that if they didn't put these rabbis in a room with a whole lot of paper, they were going to lose some of this history. So this happened at two different times uh, in uh, the years gone by. And the Babylonian Talmud remains the um, most used and most uh, highly regarded uh, in terms of Jewish uh, rabbinical uh, history. So according to those sources that I've just now um, reviewed with you, Abraham was not raised by his father Terah. 
And there were events sur uh, surrounding the birth of Abraham that, or Abram, I apologize, events surrounding his birth that forced his father Terah to whisk his newborn child off with a servant girl to be raised by distant relatives for fear that his young son Abram would be killed by the king of the day. And so, while I zoom, Abram, again, is this purple line here. And Abram, if you follow it all the way up, who's still alive during Abram's birth? We have Shem, this blue line here. He's still alive. Let's keep going up. Who else is still alive? Look, we got Noah, still alive. So I want to point out to you that Abram, right here, has these two fathers of the faith still alive. And in actual fact, Shem, who dies in, in the year 2158, Shem is alive for both Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shem is still alive and still an influence. Yes, an influence in the lives of these characters. So we're going to just slide up here and we're going to take a look. Genesis 11.31 says that Terah was leaving Ur to go to Canaan. Why was he fleeing, or was he called to leave this fertile valley? Well, we understand that Terah was not called to leave the fertile valley. But for some reason, at the end of Genesis, we see clearly that the father, the patriarch of the family clan, has packed up everything, and he's fleeing Ur of the Chaldees, and he's heading to this place called Canaan. Why was he doing that? Very, very strange to leave the breadbasket of the world and embark on a journey to a land that Terah's never been to. So the, the truth of what's going on here is that it was Abram who came back to his father's house, and according to the Babylonian Talmud, bear with me as we slide down to the bottom of the chart, if you have the printed copy, you can do this a whole lot easier. That Abram is raised. That servant girl took the baby Abram up the river to be raised by Noah and to be raised by Shem. Abraham, or Abram, grows up to understand and know who God is. And according to the Jewish rabbis who have taught and studied the life of Abraham for, well, thousands of years. According to the Babylonian Talmud and Jewish rabbis, Abraham was exactly 52 years old when he returned to his father's house to preach that there is only one God. Abraham's 52 when that takes place. And we know now, according to the Bible in Genesis chapter 12, where we pick up the story of Abram, he's 75 years old. But in the Bible, we don't have any idea what took place during the first 75 years of Abram's life. Well, it's okay. There's other sources. Uh, history, uh, the Babylonian Talmud, uh, Jewish rabbinical history, teaches about Abraham's early life. And the book of Jasser, which again is mentioned twice in the Bible, goes into great detail about Abraham's early life. Well, picking up where we left off here, let me just, pardon me, my fat thumb slipped on the, uh, on the mouse. Abraham is 75 years old when he leaves his father's house. It's the year 2023. Seven years into this journey of leaving his father's house, God makes a covenant with Abraham, and the year is 2030. I want to point out to you that for Abraham, being the eldest son in his family clan, the social responsibility for Abraham was to stay and care for his parents in their old age. This was the responsibility and the understanding within their culture that children were to do this, care for their parents. Uh, it even is today. We have this same uh, in, ingrained thought of caring for our parents when they get older. Well, this was true for Abraham as well. But at 75, when God called Abraham out from his father's house, to be separate from his father's house, that uh, the year is 2023, and Abraham 
Now, I'm, I'm going to just point out a couple of things that I find fascinating. At, in 1948, Abraham is born. Israel becomes a nation again in our year, 1948. 75 years after Abraham is born, it's the year 2023, and God calls Abraham out from his father's house, away from his earthly inheritance, to a land that Abraham does not know, to a place where God had prepared for Abraham to inherit, into Abraham's inheritance. So Abraham is forsaking his earthly inheritance and stepping into his heavenly inheritance. And this was the year 2023. Seven years after that, along in his journey to Canaan, God makes a covenant with Abraham. It's the year 2023. And this covenant is very poignant because the, God asked Abraham to split animals down the middle. And Abraham understood what a blood covenant was. He was not shocked uh, by this, but he was amazed that the God of the universe was about to cut a blood covenant with him. And we read in scripture in Genesis 15 that God himself walked into the blood trail between the two halves of these animals. And God himself swore and made a covenant with Abraham. It's interesting when you study this chart that exactly 2,000 years from that moment, 2,000 years would take you to the year 40 30. Well, 4030, folks, is actually what we call the year 30 AD. There is no year zero between BC and AD dates. It is the year 30 AD that Christ, so God again, is standing in that blood trail. He's making the blood trail with Christ hanging on the cross. And that took place exactly 2,000 years from the very first covenant that God made with Abraham. And I find that just more than a little bit strange, more than a little bit coincidental. And that from the cross to present day, it has not yet been 2,000 years. In fact, from the cross, which is the establishment of the new covenant, to today, it's been 1,986 years. So we're 14 years away from uh, 2,000 years from the cross. Just, you know, I ran down a rabbit hole. That's a little aside, something for you to think about. But when you're studying the life of Abraham, these things kind of jump out at you. We see the birth of Ishmael. Abraham's finally circumcised in Genesis 17. The year is 2047. And a year later, Isaac is born in the year 2048. And as mentioned, Abraham dies in the year 2123. We can see again here is the lifeline of Abraham. So there's lots of study notes in this chart. We're going to go over some more uh, in our next video. Thank you very much for staying tuned.